Hello, welcome back. Last time we were creating this plane, but it was full of faces that we didn't want it to be full of. Inside, there's faces. Bad faces. So in this episode we're going to make it so that's hollow. The way to do that is to use a function called isTransparent. Now if you followed along with my first um, version of this, you may actually remember most of these functions. These are slightly more polished than the ones I was using back then. And I said that I was going to get the noise fields in episode 3, but it looks like that's more like episode 5. I was, I'm was i taking this at a much slower pace with smaller um, individual lessons are much shorter, which is good. That's the better way to do it. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to build another, instead of just build face, we're also going to have a public virtual bool is transparent. int x, int y, int z. We also are going to need a lot of other things to support this in the near future, so we might as well do them now. Public virtual byte, get byte, int x, int y, int z. If x is less than 0, or y is less than 0, and I'm going to need an extra parenthesis, there we are, or z is less than 0, or y is greater than or equal to uh, world dot current world dot height, or x is greater than or equal to world dot current world dot width, or z is greater than or equal to world dot current world dot width. There we go. So if any of those things are true, then our byte is going to be zero. It's going to be an error. That's actually not true, but it's true for now. Later on, we're going to have it actually go over to the next chunk and look there. Like so. So here in is transparent, we're going to need to have a set of arguments. Uh, I mean, a set of arguments. What I'm talking about. Byte brick equals get byte x y z. We're going to get a byte, and we need to have a switch statement for our beautiful brick. So what are we going to do exactly with this switch statement? We have actually a lot of options here, but since we only have two bricks right now, zero and one, we're only going to default to those. So we're culling interior faces. So the idea here is that if this face is pointing at another opaque brick, we don't need to draw the face on either brick. We don't th That face will never be seen. And that will definitely cut down on the number of, uh, of faces that we draw, which will radically reduce the number of vertexes we use uh, and triangles we use. Uh, by more than half, we'll, we'll end up cutting all of them down. So here, this is our left wall. So we're going to say, uh, let's go ahead and just mark them all. Actually, I don't believe this is true. I think I've got those reversed. Yeah, Y is up, not down. And I believe that this is front and back, but I might have these backwards. Whatever. I do have them backwards. There we go. Um, that was the error I was making in the original series, by the way. So if it's the left wall, then we if it is the left wall, then we have to check to the left. So if not is transparent, x minus one y z, then draw the face. If not is transparent, x plus one y z, then draw the face. Simple enough, right? And we just keep doing that. Except, of course, we have to point in the correct direction each time. So here we have y minus 1 and y plus 1. Here we have z minus 1 and z plus 1. So let's go ahead and contrast and... Mm, not all code pass return a value. Oh. Oh no, we fell through. What happened? 
It looks like our Y axis is screwed up. And none of the other ones worked either. Everything didn't work. The things that are supposed to be transparent are opaque, and the things that are opaque are supposed to be transparent. And you know why that is? Because I have is transparent backwards. I must. Um, no, that's correct. If it's empty, then it's transparent. Oh! <laughs> Let's make basic logic errors. There we go. Much better. So now you can see that this... Oh, well, the camera is upside down for some reason. But you can see that now it's hollow. There's no longer anything inside of it. But our collision mesh well, still works fine. Oh, come on. But our collision mesh still works fine because uh, it only relies on the exterior faces. In fact, the collision mesh is going to be the slowest part of this entire chunk calculation thing. So um, it's good to keep the collision, the mesh is small for the collision mesh, and later on we're actually going to make a reduced mesh specifically for the collision system, um, because otherwise we'll be here all day cal recalculating that collision mesh, and it'll freeze for a second every time we do so. But there's an annoying, an annoying problem here. I'm pretty sure that this should be returning a value. I think that what the problem is is that range is exclusive, not inclusive. Yeah, there we go. Much better. So now you can see that we have a fully functional screen here. Um, you can't really see any of the bricks as bricks yet. They're just kind of faceless white blobs. But we've already got shadows and we've already got all that stuff. So next episode, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start to delve into the wild, wild world of noise fields. That's going to be quite an episode. Um, so buckle your belts and uh, and sit tight because that's going to be long